So welcome back. Now this is part two of KDetronic. How does it work? Now in the first video, obviously I showed you the inside of it and how it goes. Now what I've done now is made a lovely little model of a metering head and an air flap so you can really see it functioning as one unit. But before we start, if you could, give us a subscribe, click the button, it is free. Thank you very much. And here we go. So this is our working model of the Boss K Jetronic. So I'll show you how it works as one complete unit. So as we can see, this is our air metering flap. This is your air flap where your air comes in. This is your fuel metering head. This is your fuel metering pin. Ignore the tapered section on that. So how it works again. So this is your fuel in. So the fuel comes from the pump, as we know, KJet wants 5 bar of fuel pressure minimum, take so it work really good. So we've got fuel pressure in here. This then fills all these bottom chambers. So this is a bigger chamber, and that's the other chamber. And then what happens, say your, your car's running, it's idling. This flap here, or air metering unit, moves up. As that moves up, you can see it's raising a pin inside there. And when you let go, the fuel pressure that's in the top does allow that pin to settle. So as we can see, this is our fuel pin. And this is what it actually sits on, is a roller. And this roller is connected to this arm. Now, I'm using a 3mm Allen key as a pointer. Because, have you ever wondered what adjusts? So when you put the Allen key down here, you'll see where the Allen key sits on. There is a very, very, very fine threaded nut. You do it one way, or you can do it the other way. So you do it one way, and it allows this arm to raise, which makes more contact with that. The other way, and then it goes down, less contact. Now what you want really, between the air plate arm and there is a tiny smidge in the gap. So when the engine's running, as soon as the engine starts to run, the engine sucks air in and opens this flap. And what you don't want is perfect contact between the roller and that fuel metering pin. Because what will happen is you'll get too much fuel. So as you see, air flap goes up, moves the pin up, and then the pin comes back down. So the fuel pressure that helps that pin go back down is this union here. And this will be in the next video, which is the warm-up regulator modification. So how to uh, make the cage jet slightly more fruity. So the fuel pressure that's up here sits in this chamber. So in that little bit there, there's a tiny hole. And that goes, the pressure comes in here through that hole through a, a tiny pinprick hole on the top of this and holds pressure inside here. The more pressure is there, the more force is pushing that pin down. The less pressure, the more the fuel pin can raise up easily. There is a spring in there, but I've taken it out for ease of demonstration. So as we can see here, we know we've got fuel in our lower chamber, which also fills all this chamber up here and inside this. So this is all full of fuel. And what you have is you just see there on the side of the fuel body is an orifice. Now in that orifice is a tiny slit and the slit is 0 0.2 millimetres in width which is next to nothing. So that fuel comes in here in this gap comes out that slit and in to this top orifice here and that goes down on top of the metal plate pushes down and overcomes the equilibrium, as we learned in our last video, and then comes out the injector. Now what we can see is this bit here, that lines up with the lowest part of that slit. Even though it's a bigger hole, the slit's not in the middle. And then as the air flap raises, the pin moves, and as you can see, 
I'll put it into a, a fourth roll position. So that's the air flat maximum up. The pin is going to stay there, helpfully. And what you can see now, this portion has raised and uncovered a whole amount of that fuel slip. So all the fuel that's coming in here and around here can then come out, straight out. And then we can just close it down. Again, that's probably what mid throttle. And again, you've got only half of that slip uncovered to let fuel out. So you can see another angle from this side where you've got the fuel meter in slit in there and the height of the top of the fuel pin. Again, we're in an idle position or closed position. As soon as you start to rev the engine, see the fuel pin is moving up and again uncovering that orifice, allowing more fuel to come through. Some symptoms you can have or you might have heard is if you've got problems starting, the car's been sat for a while, people say, oh, the fuel pin's probably stuck. This, as you know, doesn't have any actual rubber seals. There's rubber seals between the fuel body and here. I haven't put them in because you don't need them in. This and this are a 100% machined finish. They're a tolerance fit, which means the machine in between these metal surfaces and this, the tolerance is so tight that it um, prevents leakage of fuel. On the other side of that, if you have a bad batch of fuel or it's been sat for a while, this pin can quite easily stick inside the body. So you'll find you can move your air plate up. Say it's stuck there, you can move your air plate up. And the pin might not be moving. So that's one, uh, one common problem that shares with all of the metering heads. That pin can stick. So versus this and modern age. So you've got your modern age ECU map or ECU map table. So what you have is your airflow ratio, your fuel mixture. So you want Lamba or 14.7 to 1 um, fuel mixture driving around normally, sort of tickling the throttle. How, this, how does this all work it all out then? Well, the precise measurement of that pin versus the diameter of this as you see it tapers so as this air flap moves up you can see it's letting in x out of air again a full throttle position because we love full throttle all that air that's coming through this gap here is metered as in it can't get any more or less through it, it can get less if it closes but when that's in its absolute open position no more air can physically fit through there so the amount of air can fit through there is matched the amount of fuel that's being allowed to flow through this pin out into the injectors so the fuel fuel that's delivered is relative to how much air can go there which is what gives you your correct fuel mixture and again look forward to the next video where I will be showing you more about this part here and I'll show you exactly how to do the warm-up regulator modification which allows a bit more fuel than uh, Bosch intended. So thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. It took me quite a while to make this and it's pretty cool. I'll see you in the next one.